So today's video is going to be a bit different because instead of me sharing the psychology behind something or explaining how and why something is diagnosed the way it is, today I just want to talk about something that I've been feeling and that is emotionally drained. Ugh. 2020 has been a lot between the pandemic, protests, riots, hurricanes, earthquakes, fires, smoke everywhere right now. I swear nothing surprises me anymore. Um, while all this was happening, I've been creating content, like always, you guys have seen it, every Monday, I'm there. Um, my podcast also, and at the same time, writing a book about trauma. I know, the irony. And supporting my patients and trying to support myself. I'm exhausted and I'm often overwhelmed. And in fact, the other night I went to bed at 8.30 p.m. because I was so tired that I just couldn't be up anymore. I remember laying on the couch being like, my head is just so heavy. Ugh. And for a while, I'm not gonna lie, I wondered if I was depressed. But I don't really have any of those symptoms because I still enjoy the things that I've always enjoyed. And I'm still pretty motivated. Then I wondered if maybe I was just more anxious than usual, but even that didn't really pan out because while I do have racing thoughts sometimes at night and I'll worry about our future, I can really get it to stop fairly easily. And it always has a cause, you know, like I've watched the news too late at night or I've read about some, something terrible that's happened on my phone while I'm laying in bed. I know, I shouldn't do it, but I'm human too. I make mistakes. Then, a week ago, I was listening to a podcast and someone mentioned being emotionally drained and they were describing how it felt to them and it just hit me. That is what I'm feeling. It's not just being burnt out, it's emotionally taxing and I don't have any more of that emotional support to give, which has been hard. I'm not gonna lie, you guys, I've been a lot more irritable, not as patient with Sean or other people in my life. And I'm often agitated by an ask that I receive in my email and I hate feeling this way. It's uncomfortable and it's completely out of character for me. So it just feels, you know, it's got that like the internal struggle of like, this isn't who I am. So I really just wanted to share it in case it's helpful to any of you because this is a shitty, shitty time. And I still find myself wanting to cry frequently even when I'm filming this video, just talking about this, hold it together. Um, and I feel bad that I feel bad because other people have it worse than me. And I even worry that mentioning any of this because I, then I have the self judgment, you know, telling me that I should be over it by now and I should just be fine. But how the fuck are we supposed to get over something that's still going on when nothing has really changed and cities and countries are still going in and out of lockdown and, and there's still no treatment or vaccine? Ugh. I know that this isn't helpful and so far I haven't offered any tips or coping, school, coping tools, but I just needed to vent about it. It's been getting me down and it's been putting me on edge and making it hard to do everything that I need to do each day. And it sucks. And I thought that it could help maybe just to share what I'm going through in case any of you maybe are going through it too. Not to mention that just talking about this, even and even just thinking and preparing about this video, like it, it's been helpful, it's been kind of freeing and it's, it's like journaling, right? So it's like another release. And don't worry, I did look into emotional burnout or being emotionally drained and I found some ways, hopefully, that we can all better cope. Because I don't know about you, but I, I can't, I just, I can't keep doing what I'm doing because it doesn't feel good. I'm exhausted, I'm angry, I'm frustrated. It just feels shitty. Which is why the first tip, and I kind of knew this, is to take a break if you can. Like me going to bed at 8.30 the other night because I was too tired. Maybe we can do that. Or maybe it means that you take one day off from work or plan a staycation so you don't have to do as much, you know, even though I know we're still at home and I don't always like that as well, but that can be helpful too. Or maybe, you know, we outsource some of the things that are maxing us out if we're able, like getting groceries delivered instead of having to go to the grocery store. That's been really helpful for me. But whatever you have to do to get some time to yourself, let's try to do it. And please, please, I beg of you, please share what you do below because that would be so incredibly helpful for me because I'm having my own tough time here. Then also, what I'm trying to do right now, and it's just, just getting started, is to figure out what it is that's maxing me out. I know, obviously, we have the pandemic and the fires and all the other shit going on in our world, but are there other things that are upsetting me? Causing me to feel overwhelmed or, I mean, and the, the short answer is just, yeah, there's a lot of things that are doing this. And in case this is helpful, here are some of the things I've realized. 
Number one is I feel like I've been doing most of the cleaning of the house and I need more help with that. Next, I can't be the emotional Sherpa for so many of my, uh, so many of the people like in my personal life, friends and family. And what I mean by that is because I am more of an empath, a lot of people come to me for insight and emotional support. But I think I'm gonna have to tighten my boundaries on that for a bit so that I can fill my own pitcher. You know, I can't pour from an empty pitcher and right now I'm fucking dry as a bone. So I don't know, that's, that's all I've come up with so far. But I'm gonna keep digging. I'm gonna keep thinking about it. I'm gonna keep journaling. And I also think diet and exercise could play a role too. So I'm gonna to try to mix up, try different kind of workouts and stretches and try to eat more balanced meals and not so many brownies and Pop-Tarts. <laughs> I'm doing my best. And another thing that's helping me is just speaking up more about how I feel. Like even saying it to you is helpful because it's not just in my head and I'm not ruminating about it, feeling like I'm going crazy or blaming myself for everything going on. And I've been texting my friends more about it. I've been talking to Sean, my mom, my grandma, everybody, and using my support system as much as I can because I know that if I keep it inside, it'll just fester. And then I want to cry all the time and I can lash out. And most likely it'll be at Sean because he's the only person I see regularly, which is something that I'm trying not to do. But I will be honest, some days it just sucks. I yell, I get angry, and I cry, and all that shitty stuff. So if you're doing that too, don't feel bad. And I don't know why, but just hearing of that other people aren't doing well either makes me feel more normal. For instance, I was on Instagram the other day, and this woman that I've been following for years, I don't know her personally, but you know you feel like you know them. She shared how much that she's gained all this weight during quarantine. She hasn't done as much work as she's planned and she didn't keep any of her 2020 goals. And she was really bummed about it. And even though I felt for her and I hated that she's struggling, it did oh, give me the sense of relief and make me just feel better about my own issues and the fact that I'm not doing well either. So I wanted to create this video just because maybe that could do the, you know, it could do the same thing for you. It can let you know that you're not alone, that it's okay if you're having a tough time. And the final tip that I found is something that I've always kind of struggled with personally is separation between work and regular life. If you didn't realize, I'm in my apartment right now and Sean and I have been working out of our thousand square foot apartment for over eight years. And to say it's gotten a little tight in here is the understatement of the century. We eat dinner at the same table we record our podcasts at, for example. So it's really hard for me to shut off work and just be regular Katie. Because believe it or not, I'm not always thinking and acting like a therapist. I know, it's shocking. But I need time to not be, you know, on or thinking about things from a psychological perspective. And if I don't get that like brain break, I get exhausted. And we all need time off from work or school. So I'm gonna to try to get back into set working and not working hours and not let so much of my work invade the parts of the, our apartment that aren't already invaded. This, 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 there's some there, trust me, there's a little bit there. But you know, we've gotta start somewhere. And I know some of you are trying to get your kids on their Zoom calls for school, making sure that they pay attention, do their homework while also trying to do your full-time job and keeping the house clean, cooking a meal. Uh, it, it's, a lot. There's so much shit that we have to do every day and I feel like it just got, there's more piled on with this pandemic. So just try and keep some time sacred so that our whole lives don't get overrun by our work and our to-do list because that's what leads me to feeling just exhausted and emotionally burnt out. Anyways, I feel like I've rambled long enough. I just wanted to share or rather update you on how I'm handling everything that's happening and the truth is I'm not handling it very well. It's hard. I miss my friends. I miss going out to dinner. I miss traveling. And oh my God, I just, there's so much that I miss. I even miss parties that I would normally not go to. Ugh. To have the opportunity to cancel things last minute and not go. What a luxury. Am I right? Anyways, I love you. I hope you found this helpful or at least validating and let you know that you aren't alone in feeling like shit and doing things that you know aren't helping anything. Because I'm... Unfortunately, right there with you.